Hi, this is Billy Bean here with another segment of World News Update. Today's date, November 26, 2023, episode 94. Some of the things we'll be covering, Planet X, Nephilim, the bloodline of President Trump, RH Factor, Hebrew bloodline, and Looking Glass. Some of my sources are God in the Bible, Patriot subscriber, Dr. Michael Sila, Super Soldier Talks, uh, James Rink's recent interview with John Whitberg, of Robert Seffer, an anthropologist, a recent interview on Before It's News by David Hevener of Gary Wayne. So, let's get started. Yeah. Okay. And also, Best and Taylor. So, I want to begin first uh, talking about different species on Earth because much of that information has been hidden from us. I seem to be a little more receptive to it because when I was young, um, I, I virtually a child, I understood that my uh, mission on Earth, this was a training place and then I would go to heaven, rest, get more training, and go out and be like a missionary to the stars, to other species. Uh, I was very young, so I don't, did not even have a concept of what are species. But at any rate, uh, we're now finding out that God, uh, billions and billions of years ago, created humans first after the angels. But then he created other species. That's the part that's been hidden from us. And you may ask, can these other species be saved? If they are created by God and contain the Spirit of God as we humans do, yes, they can be. With the same gospel message of uh, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, it's all the same. The crucifixion of reverberated across time and space and a one-time event. So, that's going on. So, what are the species that are on Earth? I get this information from Gene Decode. And I'm going to use about 10 billion as my baseline for the number of individuals on Earth. And Gene Decode says 30% are human. So that would be about 3 billion. That means 70% are not human. And so that would be about 7 billion. So what are they? Now, this is my reckoning that we have four types of individuals on Earth. We have what I call ETs, and under this I put fallen angels. The symbol I use for fallen angels is FF. We have humans, and I use HH uh, symbol for humans, and this is just uh, using the uh, generic, uh, genetic when you're making a, a genetic uh, tree, you use certain symbols here uh, on the left. Traditionally, is the father symbol. So the father is human. The mother is human. Of course, we know in fallen angels, there's no father or mother. So I use FF to represent fallen angels. If I was doing a match between these two, it would be FF with humans and they would make a hybrid and so now we have three billion humans on earth we've got the ets and i believe we also have non-terrestrial species now angels are created by god humans are created by god Non-terrestrial species are created by God. But then we have hybrids, and they are not created by God. 
Now, this is uh, how I'll put this forward for you so you can understand. So gene decode says until the hybrids have 52% human DNA, they do not receive the Spirit of God and they are unredeemable. Non-terrestrials have free will as we humans do. They do have the opportunity to be redeemable, but they can also choose to be evil. So we have four groups, I believe, on earth. We've got the fallen angels created by God, and they were cut off by God, so they are not redeemable. God has already judged them. Humans are redeemable based on our free will. Non-terrestrials are redeemable based on free will. Hybrids are not redeemable until they have approximately 52% human DNA and can receive the Spirit of God. So this is what we're operating with on earth. And then we can, it follows that there are a lot of uh, bloodline distinctions between these groups. So. Now, I had a question from a Patriot subscriber. Are any of the, the Nephilim, are they redeemable? Not until they have 52% human DNA. And we do have a Bible reference for that, which is the book of Deuteronomy uh, 23.2, and where God says they're going to be bastards until the 10th generation. So I take that to mean uh, we have the Nephilim, the hybrid, and they mate with humans. And there's only one incursion of the Nephilim blood bloodline through 10 generations. I believe in the 11th generation, then the individual has 52% human DNA can receive the Spirit of God, and thus has an opportunity to be redeemed. And the Spirit of God uh, gives us contact with God. So that's why it's so important. Okay, now we'll talk about Planet X. And we know we have Planet X. Uh, Gil Broussard... Uh, is a Christian base. He's done a lot of evidence on Planet X and relates it to several things in the Bible. One was that uh, king and and uh, he was going to die and a prophet came and said, no, God is going to relent. He wanted a sign. And the sign was the sundial would go back 10 degrees. And Gilbersard relates that to a passing of Planet X. Also, the day that Jesus, who many call Yeshua, was crucified, we had all over the earth for hours, um, darkness and an earthquake. He rela uh, Gilbersard relates that to the passing of Planet X. So now, most of us are aware that Earth is being impacted by space at this point in time. And this is coming out, uh, and Gene DeCode says Planet X is part of a, I think he calls it Nemesis. It's a group of planets like this. One of them is Nibiru, uh, who many call Planet X. Now, Gene DeCode maintains that they came in in 2017 and passed out in 2019. Well, we're getting all these reports about different planets and, and different motherships. And, okay, so that's going on. So at any rate, Planet X, Anunnaki, is one of the species on here. And apparently, this species is not 
fallen angels. It's just a separate species, and it's been to Earth in the past, and we remember in Egypt and uh, Enlil and some other names. Uh, Zechariah Sitchin put it in his series Earth Chronicles, and he worked for the deep state, and part of his objective was to put in his books that ETs created humans. Not true. So at any rate, this is coming out from sources that now Planet X, here's Earth. We've got this Oort cloud uh, around Earth, parts of a previous planet that blew up. And supposedly, Planet X is on the other side of this Oort cloud. And these Anunnaki are called tall whites. I'm assuming they have white skin and they're tall. They have, uh, they are individuals. They do not have a hive mind. And the information is the females are 8 to 10 feet tall. The males are 11 to 15 feet tall. And some people are calling them giants Nephilim. I submit to you giants Nephilim came from the uh, crossing of fallen angels and humans. But there have been other species on earth and there have been matings between these other species and humans and have made hybrids. And we have this. Beston Taylor and also uh, Dr. Michael Sala. I'll link this for you. It's an interview with Dr. Hertag. And they're talking about a disclosure coming and that they're Christians and God created other species. We see this coming out. And uh, so, yeah. And also we have uh, another evidence-based um information that we're having space impact and that is that the Schumann vibration of the earth is changing traditionally it's been 7.383 hertz which is one pulse per second now it's up to about a steady 50 which means that humans are adapting. Um, I believe humans on earth now uh, were selected by God for this time frame. And we have within our DNA the ability to change from a vibration of 7.83 hertz to one of 50. Yeah, we are, as uh, King David said, wonderfully made. That is true. So now we're going to look at some information from Gary Wayne. He's a Bible scholar. He wrote the book, Genesis 6, Conspiracy, I believe. He was recently interviewed by David Hevener. And he's bringing out this. The Nephilim were created. That was from the fallen angels mating with humans. Now, Gary Wayne is bringing this up because I have some uh, Patriot sub subscribers ask, well, how are those angels able to mate with humans? And angels have the ability to shape, shift. Now, originally, Adam and Eve had 64-strand DNA, as did Jesus, and many call Yeshua. And we know, like in the Bible, it talks about Jesus was in a crowd of people and they were going to kill him and he passed right through them. Jesus had the ability to shapeshift, as did Adam and Eve, because I have been able to see back in the past to what Adam and Eve could do, telekinesis, travel by thought, and all kinds of things. So when Gene DeCode came out and said Jesus had 64-strand DNA, as did Adam and Eve, that answered my question as to how Adam and Eve uh, could just, you know, have a seed in their hand and it burst into a full-grown plant. and was like, wow. Okay, 
So that's going on. Now, so Gary Wayne brings out that the angels could shapeshift. And he says the fallen angels could create a physical body for themselves. And they could choose whether they wanted to appear as a male or female. And uh, Gary believes that uh, some of the fallen angels settled in the place called Canaan up on earth. And uh, yeah, they don't forgive God for kicking them out of heaven after Satan uh, led the rebellion against God because Satan wanted to be God and took one third of the angels with him. Uh, billions and so now uh, Gary Wayne is bringing this out <coughs> the Anakim in the Bible which some are relating to Canaan relate to Philistines and they're trying to relate to the Palestinians but so far there's no DNA evidence for that linkage and uh, Gary Wayne says the women would die in childbirth because the Nephilim were giants. And he's also bringing this out another way that the fallen angels mated with human females was through in vitro uh, process where the semen was injected into the female's body. Yeah. And he says today... There are Nephilim mating with humans, just like the days of Noah. So that's going on. Now, I brought this out. I'll link this for you. It's good information from an anthropologist, Robert Seffer. And I uh, reviewed all that information he brought out. I'm familiar with a lot of it. Uh, with regard to ancient um, civilizations, how they moved or migrated, and DNA links. Okay, so he appears to be putting forth a good academic presentation of ancient peoples, their migration, also links it to DNA over time. And he's bringing this out. He's also um, correlating these movements, including the 12 lost tribes of Israel. And I believe his information appears to be, um, have valid uh, basis for putting it forth. And he's talking about the migration of the tribe of Dan, moving into Scotland, Ireland, also into Ukraine, Belarus, that brought about. Now these movements of the, into Ukraine, Belarus, I'll be giving some more information about this group, the Slavs. So he's saying the 12 tribes migrated here and here and went to different areas. Also, Scandinavia, <clears throat> excuse me, Scandinavia, Denmark. Now, this is interesting. He believes that out of the uh, 12 lost tribes of Israel, they migrated on Europe. He's uh, detailing a group that came to America. And he's calling them the Amish. And he says some of the characteristics are the adults can digest milk. Their coloring, blonde hair, blue eyes, fair skin, and predominantly RH negative uh, blood type. And he's also... Um, uh, detailing uh, the migration of the Canaan or the 12 lost tribes, which he takes down to Canaan and to the Philistines and other groups. 
and he's saying they spread out to Finland, Lapland, Estonia. And in Finland, Lapland, and Estonia, the language is similar to Hebrew. Their year begins March 1, and they have their worship date on Saturday. And I've seen other anthropologists um, tie in uh, religious dates and year uh, that way. So he believes the Finland people represent the tribe of Issachar. And he believes that President Trump came out of a, a German background. So we have the 12 lost tribes. He's linking one, Dan. He links Issachar to Finland. But he's linking both groups down to Europe. And he's saying President Trump has German uh, background. I'll link his video for you. He gives more detail. And we know President Trump's mother was uh, Scottish. Both of her parents came from Scotland. And he's saying that President Trump has RH negative blood. So now we see uh, a setting up of bloodlines and a way to track migration of tribes. So we have this. Now, this is coming out, bloodlines. And we know, I've been talking about the deep state representing 13 bloodlines that came out of the Nephilim. And we take this down until they have 52% human DNA. This group is unredeemable. Okay, not cannot be saved. They're psychopaths, essentially. So, out of this group, these 13 bloodline families, and I sh uh, demonstrated how this can come about uh, through the fallen angels mating with humans, going through 10 generations of only humans. You can come here. Now, my thinking, and I've put this out before, from these um, 13 bloodlines in this group came the Trump family and also the Kennedy family. Because you don't get to be president unless you're coming out of these lines. I submit they came out of a more fully human uh, bloodline, and they are both worshipers and in line with God. So this is going on. So we have the deep state, 13 family bloodlines. We know Rockefeller, Rothschild, Collins, Morgans, Freemans. Now, it doesn't mean every individual name with these common last names is a deep state. No. So at any rate, the deep state, the 13 bloodlines. Now we'll talk about the Jew, Jewish bloodline as opposed to Hebrew bloodline. Now, many people now are making a distinction for the bloodline DNA and this group DNA. And we see several differences in their uh, religious worshiping. Uh, people with a Hebrew bloodline who are traditional Judaism used the Torah, that's the first five books of the Bible. This group uh, uses the Kabbalah, which is described as sorcery, witchcraft, a magic book. They also do certain rituals, sacrifices, just like we saw in the Bible with Moloch and Kamosh and 
those other pagan gods, and they use the Talmud. Now, I heard uh, from uh, Israeli News Live, Stephen Benoon, um, gave a video clip of an actual, they have rabbis, and this rabbi said, you Christians worship one Jew. You should worship all of us Jews. We are gods. Actually said that. And he's an ordained rabbi. So this group has uh, rabbis that stand up and make unbiblical statements. This group also has rabbis. But they are traditional. They stick with what's in the first five books in the Bible. So now, the Hebrew characteristics are blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, yeah, fair skin. And in this group, and many have been tied to Italy, have brown hair and eyes. So we see a, a different genetic group. And this is coming out. So this is the Hebrew line. This group over here represents the Ashkenazi Jews. And it says 80% of the world's Jews are in this group which represents inside the U.S. 90%. And the closest match genetically is from Italy. Yeah. So we see there are two, uh, with regard to Jewish people, there's two different bloodlines. And so the Kabbalah, this book, uh, relates uh, to the Son of God as Fallen Angel, the Anunnaki, Nephilim hybrids. Some uh, appear to be survivors from Atlantis. They are hybrids, and some of them also went into Canaan and became Canaanites. Yeah. And the Hebrew bloodline appears to be a basis for what's called Aryan uh, group. So we still are working in the past with many different moving parts. And so uh, this is coming out. This Judaism, this form, is apostasy. They use the Kabbalah. They use astrology. They worship multiple gods, pagan gods, just like from the Bible. And they believe the third temple in Israel has to be rebuilt to bring in the Antichrist. Now, I had a Patriot subscriber recently bring out a, a big distinction. Antichrist uh, means to take the place of Christ. This group is Judaism, uh, traditional. They worship one God. But they also believe the third temple has to be rebuilt to bring in the Messiah. This group, while well, they get their information out of the Bible, they also rejected Jesus as the Messiah. It is this group who had infiltrated the priest line in the Bible times, the Pharisees and Sadducees, and it's this group who voted to crucify Jesus. What they did not know about was the concept of resurrection. So that's going on. And now we'll cover some information coming from uh, James Rank, Super Soldier, interview recently with John Whitberg. He's saying on Earth, we have three species, and he's relating that to blood type and RH factor. And he's saying if you have RH negative, that makes it easier for uh, certain off-world uh, uh, 
uh, non-terrestrial species to mate with humans, to make a hybrid. So if you have RH negative, it makes it easier for the Anunnaki to mate with the human. If you have any uh, saying AB blood type negative RH factor, on Earth there are about two to three million. Now this fits in with the information I began with about 30% of individuals on Earth are fully human, 70% are not. And we have this. Yeah, so Gene Decode had also brought this out. For the RH factor, whether you are a plus or a minus, it just makes it easier for your blood type uh, to mate with a certain type of non-terrestrial. Now, Peter the Insider brought out a third RH factor, X. I'll get to that. So we have on Earth, we've got four blood types, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, and O. And we have three different types of RH factor, plus, minus, X, plus, minus, X, plus, minus, X, plus, minus, X. Now, so this is uh, coming out from some information from uh, both my research and blood types and also um, John uh, Whitberg's information that the AB negative, there's two to three million on Earth and they are hybrids from Alderaan, a star out in space. And that the RH plus is easier to combine with Anunnaki and make Nephilim. And the RH negative to uh, combine with Anunnaki, which are Draco. That's a separate non-terrestrial species. So we, we have a lot of species on Earth. Now this X, I'll go into that. So I brought out in this previous information I've been giving about the Slavs. And the Slavs are in Ukraine, Belarus, Russia. And Peter the Insider, director of the 12th Division of the ACIO, Alien Contact Intel Organization, a division of the U.S. federal government, NSA, brought this information out several years ago. Chernobyl was not an accident, but rather a test. That was by the Soviet Union to see what the effect would be of radiation on the Slavs who have RHX. They do not have positive or negative. And it turned out they're immune to radiation. So that's going on. And now we'll talk about We'll talk about looking glass. So what I've covered so far is the bloodline. Um, we have the uh, fallen angels. We've got the Nephilim, which are hybrid. We also have non-terrestrial species mating with humans. They're also making hybrids. So we see multiple moving parts, and I gave the number from Gene to Code, 7 billion, 3 billion on Earth are fully human. So 
and certain bloodlines have certain characteristics. Now, uh, John Whitberg brings this out about looking glass. Looking glass is a type of uh, device that can tell about the past, the present, and the future by certain individuals, de uh, depending on your blood type and RH factor and certain other abilities. So it was discovered in China in about 1941 by the Japanese uh, Chinese Pyramid. And the device is about uh, four by two by two. So something like this, it's gold. It's got two, um, about, I think these are maybe about one to two feet. These are silver. Up here is uh, gold spears, about the size of a softball. To operate it, you put your hand down, you step forward, so that between these two spears is your forehead where your pineal gland is located, your third eye. You have to have A, B, the best uh, on earth to operate it. As someone who has A, B, blood type, a negative RH factor, and they're also psychic. And John Whitberg fit this, and he... Is, has been able to operate the looking glass, a device that was discovered in China. They couldn't make it work. It went to the Germans. And then in the 1953 treaty with the U.S., it went to the U.S. because no one could operate it. The U.S. finally could operate it by making contact with the non-terrestrial group, the tall whites, and they could operate it and show the U.S. how to operate it. Currently, it's being operated by the U.S. Navy, and there are 10 of them on Earth currently. So that's going on. Yeah, so... Through the looking glass, the individual receives information past, present, and future. There's currently 10 on Earth. We have one in the U.S. somewhere operated by the U.S. Navy. So the U.S. has one. The CCP has one. Because I'm assuming they found others in, in China. And Russia has one. The Czech Republic has one, according to John. They have one in Argentina. They have one in Antarctica. They have one in Switzerland, associated with CERN. And he did not know the other three locations. Now, he distinguished between looking glass and the yellow cube, which is just a small box type, sits on a tabletop. And this one only operates in the future. The looking glass, you can see past, present, and future. The yellow cube, you can only see into the future. And I'm assuming that's also related to a certain blood type and RH factor. But he, John did not give the details on that. He did bring this out. We have a lot of cloning factories all over the earth. One is in Berkshire, England. And I found this very interesting spring texas so here is texas we've got houston 
and Spring is a little like suburb of Houston. There is a clone factory underneath it. Also one in Iceland, which he related to the movie Island. So that's going on. And now I'll do uh, a short prayer. And I've done this prayer before. So I'll give some extra information on some of the terms I'm using in the prayer. And that is, let's see, here we go. The term is furry node. On the earth, we have energy lines. Many call them ley lines. They're just lines of energy. In the space, we have the same thing. So uh, just lines of energy in the space. A furry node is, this would be a node. And furry means it's got small, um, it reinforcing uh, energy lines. So furry node. Ripples across space. And I wrote this September 5, 2023. There are ripples across space which are links of pilgrim prayers, links of DNA filaments of energy, crisscrossing starry skies. Prayers form furry nodes, binding the real world to the stars, which will soon pull down the nest of evil enemies. Furry nodes embed the good news of Jesus, whom many call Yeshua, from starry sky to starry sky. And we thank you, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, whom many call Yeshua, and God the Holy Spirit. I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there, continue to pray. God is in charge, and He is on the move. I love you. And I'll see you soon.